One of the other graphs that you're going to have to be able to do with this unit is loanable funds. It's going to seem ridiculously silly and, and, and very, very basic, but what you're going to have to do is tie it to the money market and then show the results in ADAS. So, yes, it's a very basic graph, but you're going to have to be able to play with it, and that's going to take some practice. Again, don't just watch me do it. Get some paper, you know, use a whiteboard at home, and try drawing it with me, and then you'll actually remember it. All right, loanable funds. We're talking about money that is available in the banking system for people to borrow. First thing you have to do on a graph is label your axes. Again, price on the vertical axis is going to be the interest rate, same as the money market. Zero. Along the bottom, you have to have quantity, price and quantity. You know, hopefully you're getting that. It's kind of a running theme here. And now we're talking about not the quantity of money, but the quantity of loanable funds. You can just put QLF at the bottom. Now, just like all the other demand graphs that we talked about all year, demand for loanable funds is downward sloping. Because when the interest rate is lower, people demand more money. And when the interest rate is higher, people have a disincentive to borrow. Incentive to borrow when it's lower, disincentive when it's higher. That means it's something that discourages you. Now, demand slopes down, supply slopes upward. It's not a revolutionary concept. So, we're going to put upward sloping supply of loanable funds here. We have our equilibrium interest rate. We have our equilibrium quantity. That's our starting point. Again, it's an easy graph to start with. Now, what do the parts of this actually mean? This is where you're going to have to be able to explain it and you're going to have to be able to conceptualize how this works to do some of the multiple choice problems <coughs> that you're going to encounter. Now, this is not the way you're used to thinking about money. It's not the way we've talked about money before. Supply of loanable funds comes from the amount of money that people have in banks. That means it is dependent on savings. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. Because we said, when we talked about ADAS, that savings was a leakage. Because when people save money, they're not spending it. But in this market, it's a positive. Because what happens is that the more money people save, the more money banks have available to make loans. And who are they loaning it to? We're talking about business spending. We're talking about interest-sensitive consumer spending. So yes, it's a leakage from the spending stream. But it's also a big contributor in this market to how much money the banks have available. So you've got to be able to think of it in two different ways, depending on you know, which specific market, which specific graph we're talking about. So it is a completely different way to conceptualize savings. So if people have an incentive to save more, then we increase the supply of loanable funds. If people have incentives to save less or disincentives to save, we decrease the supply of loanable funds and shift it to the left. Again, it's a shift to the right or to the left. Don't go up and down. You'll get it backwards. Okay, so don't do it. Increase away from zero, decrease towards zero. It's the best way to think about shifting these graphs. Now, loanable funds is another one that's getting hit very often on the AP exam. Sometimes you're going to have to draw it. You may end up with graphs where you just have to manipulate or explain it. And that's where it's going to get a little bit complicated. Now, let me do this. Dealing with this on the AP exam, there is no consensus among the various textbooks that are used to teach this in college level macro courses on what happens when the government runs a deficit. There are two different ways you can do this. 
Uh, one of them makes a lot more sense than the other. To show it to you, I'm going to put this up here next to the money market graph. So let me throw that one up here real quick. Again, interest, quantity of money. Let's keep the equilibrium interest rate the same. We're going to put demand for money in here, and we'll put supply of money in here. Now, if you do the side-by-side -side graphs, it's the easiest way to show how a change in one impacts the other. So don't put them on top of each other. This is a better way for you to get used to drawing it because it's a way for you to tell if you've made a mistake. And then it's easier for you to make adjustments before you turn in your paper. <coughs> All right. So how do we show government deficit spending? If the government is running a deficit, then that means that the government is demanding money in order to spend it. So on the money market graph, you make sure you have these straight. This is loanable funds. This is the money market. On the money market, government's running a deficit. That means government is demanding more money. We want to show a shift to the right. And we jack up interest rates. So this was our equilibrium interest rate across both graphs. We just pushed the interest rate up. Now, how do we demonstrate that change in the loanable funds market? There are two ways to do this. I'm going to recommend that you demonstrate it as an increase in demand for loanable funds. This is the one that makes the most sense to me. But about half the textbooks don't do this. I'll get to that in a minute. So you increase demand for money. You're increasing the demand for loanable funds because you're borrowing it over here. You're demanding it here. You're borrowing it over here. If we increase demand for loanable funds, we already showed an increase in the interest rate. Shadow on the board. All right. All right, so this is our interest rate that we showed in the money market. We want to show the same interest rate over here. So what we want to do is shift multiple funds such that we end up with, you know, right about the same level. I'm going to do, it's the really big dot theory um, that one of my professors came up with in college when you need a really big dot. Okay, see, big dot theory. Now, here's the key. You have to show, no matter how you choose to demonstrate it, that over here in the money market, when the government runs a deficit, you have an increase in demand for money, it jacks up the interest rate. In a loanable funds market, an increase in demand for loanable funds also jacks up the interest rate. I think that's the easiest way to demonstrate it because you're taking the demand curve in both graphs, you're shifting them both to the right, and the interest rate goes up. Um, the other way to show an increase in interest rates in the loanable fund market is to decrease supply. The logic in that is to say that when the government is demanding a great deal of money, it is incre I'm sorry, it's, let me try that again. Government is demanding a great deal of money, it's decreasing the national supply of loanable funds because the government is buying them up over here. Thereby reducing the supply and jacking up the interest rate. Well, I find it to be a little counterintuitive, and I think that it's easier to make a mistake. Uh, what I've seen on AP rubrics in the past is that they will accept either answer, but you have to show that an increase or a decrease in interest rate over here causes the same change over here. And in order to explain it, you're going to have to understand what you did. In my mind, it's easier to show increase, increase, then have an increase in one, a decrease in the other curve. Um, but anyhow, there's no consensus in that among economists, and the AP readers will accept either answer, but they're going to ask you to explain, which means that you're going to have to be able to say, you know, if you show a decrease in supply, that it reduces the, the national supply of loanable funds because it decreases the amount available that's, that's in the savings. Um, Again, that's the part of this that gets complicated, is dealing with deficit spending 
practice, practice, practice. 